What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Every Man is a Millionaire. Today, we're going to discuss why selling at the low price, the best price, the best offer is killing your business model and what you can do about it. For real, for real. If this is your first time joining us, I am Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is get rich and wealthy and make more money through entrepreneurship. So anything that deals in that realm, that's what we talk about. So if you want information on how to start a business or how to generate a hustle, do me this solid. Go below and hit the text notification list because YouTube doesn't send everybody Notifications that there's new content up here so you can get this content hot off the presses by doing that and not miss out. So with that, let's begin. We're going to start with you. Yes, you. Are you the type of person to buy the best deal, the middle deal or the lowest price? Because it's very important. If that's your orientation, it's going to creep up into your business model, which could be bad. Unless you're Walmart or Amazon, they have these huge conglomerates where they can exist on razor thin mar margins. Typically, smaller businesses can't. Now, I'm going to tell you where I got this from, and it's some lessons I've learned. I used to sell a ton of stuff on eBay, ton of stuff on Craigslist. And I still sell a ton of things here on YouTube. And I have this thing, this observation that has happened over and over again, regardless of what I'm selling and even to whom I'm selling it to. That when you get to the best price and a low price, your customer base significantly changes. And if you want to deal with those type of customers, you can. But if you don't, let me tell you what you need to do. Typically, when you are selling based upon your personal philosophy, you'll be more successful because you're selling to people who are just like you. So if you like those low prices, if you like putting your thumb on somebody until they scream, if you make Lincoln on a penny scream, you make George Washington on a dollar bill go holla holla, more than likely, your business is going to draw the same kind of people based upon your orientation on buying. The law of attraction doesn't just work for attracting good stuff. Look at the Trump administration. Perfect example of the law of attraction. They're attracting criminals. They're attracting scandal after scandal. Think about it because Donald Trump is a corrupt individual. So he attracts more corrupt individuals. So you on a personal level are going to attract customers just like you. It's not so fun when the shoes on the other foot now, is it? One of the things that got me out of that, cause I used to be that kind of customer. I was buying stuff out of storage units. I was getting new wardrobes for 10 bucks. What do you mean pay 125 bucks for one shirt? Are you crazy? I'm no longer like that. I'm completely indoctrinated in buying stuff and actually paying retail price or even more. Yeah, I'm that guy now. This is what happens. When you spend more on things, when you spend money, when you buy certain things, you attract people who are like you. So if you're selling at the best price, the lowest price, the best offer consistently, consistently, you're going to attract those kind of people. So basically what you want to do, if you need to, if you're not happy with the money you're making, you need to change how you buy. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very hard. It really is because it was a journey for me, but I don't look for the best deal. I look for the most valuable deal. Case in point, this house. I could have got a cheaper house easily. Around the corner, there is brand new construction. It's about $150,000 cheaper. But I didn't buy this house based on price. I bought this house based upon my needs. I needed bigger garage. I needed a driveway, three cars. I needed a big basement for my studio. So I went in house hunting, 
not with a budget, but a checklist. Let me say that again. I went house hunting, not with a budget, but with a checklist. I was willing to spend more because one of the things, and I'll give you a little background, I've studied this neighborhood. Uh, prices sometimes drop, sometimes they stabilize, sometimes they're slow to appreciate, but they never ever crash in this neighborhood. They just don't. They just don't grow as quickly, but they still grow. I bought this house as a long-term investment, a long-term hold. So I wasn't looking for the cheapest price. I wasn't looking for a budget price because I was looking to fulfill certain business things that I needed done. And I got exactly what I wanted. This house checks all of the boxes. I got the room for the gym. But once again, I could have gotten something cheaper and I could have fit my life into something cheaper. I could have made compromises. I could have made concessions. But I didn't buy on price. I bought on value to me. And once you start to do this, you will notice that your life will change. Now, I did it slowly and it took a few years. I'm not saying go out and just spend top dollar on everything. Don't do that. What I am saying is spend the most money you can on the best stuff you can and keep it become a value buyer versus a price buyer rooms to go which makes disposable furniture and i'll even get into that because some of the furniture that i bought that i got at a deal like my bedroom set it was wholesale and i got it 50 percent off of wholesale so i saved a lot of money the furniture is eight years old i still have the dresser and the nightstand which has sustained a little damage but none no, the a furniture pen won't take care of but the bed broke and now i know why it was broke because i remember the salesperson was telling me they had changed the wood so now i have a mist you know it's in the guest room and then there's a bed in there but i bought a sofa set which i paid a lot of money for a lot of money for and i got the sofa set before i got the bedroom set the sofa set looks like nothing's happened to it it looks just as good as it did when i bought it i once again i'm not saying lose your mind and go out and run stuff on credit cards what i'm saying is adopt the mindset of making more money and get what you want because what's going to happen is you're going to draw those type of people to you based upon who you are. So if you're complaining about cheap customers, you complain about people who don't have any money, look in the mirror, look in the mirror. So this is one of the reasons that the best price, the best offer, the lowest price impacts your business adversely because you're drawing more of the people who are economically thrifty, super cheap, penny conscious. That's what you're going to get. Every day, there are people out there who are spending outrageous sums of money on Ferraris. You know, you have to put a deposit down or pay for a Ferrari before it's built and there's like a two year waiting list for new Ferraris, yeah. It's an impractical car. And it's not a daily driver for most people. The ride's too rough, but they sell them. So what you should do is start saying to yourself, I can sell stuff at higher prices because there's a, everybody, every day there's someone buying something for that price. I went looking for some more furniture and I got sofas that are coming. They're being made. They're even more expensive. Once again, this ain't me bragging. I'm just saying that I have a philosophy that I buy the best that I can because that's going to draw other people to me who buy the same way. Once again, a prime example, Hustler Undergrad. You know, essentially, I sold a $3,000 product for 150 bucks per month. $3,000, you know, over time and payments and everything, but it's still a $3,000 sale. It's not cheap, but it's economically viable for many people. Everyone can buy it, I understand that, but because I put that price point out, because I have a habit of buying what I need based upon value, I drew a ton of people who are similar. And it will draw more. 
And if you want to draw people like this into your life and into your business model, you need to adjust your personal habits. One of the things that cracks me up, and I see this all of the time, that people without money know for an absolute certainty how people with money live and act and their spending habits. I live in a million dollar neighborhood. And in front of these mansions, you know what I see? I don't see Pintos, I don't see Fords, unless it's a Expedition or a Chevy, unless it's a Suburban. I see a lot of those around here, and but I also see a lot of BMWs, I see a lot of Audis, the cars that, you know, completely the millionaire next door. These, these people ain't the millionaire next door. And I did some property record searches in a lot of these houses. I believe these people own them outright. A lot of these houses, last time they were sold was 20, 30, 40 years ago. And some of them don't even have property records because they've been so long since the owner bought it. I see it all up and down. So once again, do this. Go to a well-to-do neighborhood and find a coffee shop and find a restaurant. Eat and sit and listen. And you'll find out that many of those false narratives about, quote, the millionaire next door are actually false. People with money spend money. People with money live well. People with money have nice houses. They may not be buying a Ferrari and they may have the ability to buy. I guarantee they're going to be driving something nice. I guarantee it. All right. So hopefully you got something out of this. Once again, be sure to subscribe to my text notification list. What you do is you give me your phone number and every time I put up a video or stream, I'll send you a text so you get it hot off the presses. And if you're ready, let me tell you what's going on with Hustler Undergrad. We're, we're starting to be probably past the halfway, halfway point with the art of holding and then we're going to get into Salesmatic. What I've done is put together a bundle. You've got three ways to get into here. You can go ahead and get the Hustlers Undergrad, which is 300 bucks, or you can get Salesmatic and the Art of Holding for, I believe, 179. And I think I have the Art of Holding for 150. So you can get Salesmatic and the Art of Holding for 179 per month, I think for 30 months. I think that's what I did, but it'll be below. And there's stuff already there and there'll be more stuff next week. And you can learn how to set up a solid financial base and then learn how to sell because we'll be getting into that quite heavily into October. Links below. So and also give me like 24 hours to get you in, because once you set up on the payment plan, then what I'll do is send you your login credentials and links and stuff on how to get to everything. All right. So with that, I'll see you guys later.